I am your host, Alan Peterson. Welcome to a new episode of Meet the Thriller Author, the podcast that uh, is dedicated to interviewing authors of the genre that I write in and that I love to read, which is uh, thrillers, mysteries, spy thrillers, detective crime fiction, hard-charging action stories. And those are the type of authors that we'll be meeting in these uh, in this podcast. And for this episode, number 17, you'll be meeting Ethan Jones, who is the author of the uh, very popular Justin Hall spy thriller series, in which has eight books in that series so far. Ethan has also started a new spy series, The Carrie Chronicles, which features Justin Hall's partner, Carrie O'Connor, in her own solo adventures. So he's got those two series going, and uh, I'm excited to talk to Ethan. Ethan, welcome to the show. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? I have a day job, so writing it's not uh, still my full-time job. Hopefully, in uh, in the near future, um, Lord willing, uh, I work as a as a lawyer, so that's my day job, and I try to make time to write whenever I I can squeeze a few minutes here and there. For listeners who haven't read any of your books, can you describe your novels? Sure. So I have a couple of series. They're spy thrillers. The first one that has eight books, uh, of course, I've put more time into that one. It's about the Justin Hall uh, series. So Justin Hall is a main character. He's a a Canadian security intelligence uh, spy who, as all good spies, are trying to uh, save the world and uh, keep uh, Canada and also the rest of the humanity safe from terrorists and all, all sorts of um, evil threats. And do your books, do they take place like all over the world or are they usually in Canada? They take place all over the world. Um, it depends on where the storyline uh, goes. Um, one of the most recent one, book number seven, took place mostly in, uh, in Canada. The title is Homeland, so it reflects um, the, the Canadian reality. I have your, your the first book in your series of my to-read list because I love reading about, you know, a lot, almost all the books are always at the CIA. So, you know, like mine's the CIA. So it's kind of cool to read about an other countries' uh, spies. And I, never, I haven't come any across the Canada. So that was a really, that's a really cool hook, in my opinion, a little difference. That was actually exactly my thought when I started. I didn't know whether I should have an FBI agent or a CIA agent, but I grew up reading um, spy stories, and as you say, uh, very rarely you see someone who's not uh, um, either an American or British or Israeli and Russians. They're pretty much um, all the, the, the spies all over the world. And the more I read, the more I realized that Canada, actually, not because it's my, my home country now, but uh, it does play a big role in the international arena, so I thought, why not... Um, give it some credit and uh, create uh, a few um, fictional characters that are actually Canadians. And is the uh, Canadian agency that he works for, it's the real one, the real Canadian agency? No, oh, okay. <laughs> no. The, no, the real Canadian agency, it's, uh, it's domestic, so it would be like the FBI. Oh, okay. uh, funny thing, Canada does not really have an um, agency to mirror the CIA, so the spying, it's mostly done... Um, through other um, um, different departments. So there isn't actually a real, uh, like the CIA or the, the MI6 uh, counterparts in the U.S. or in the U.K. And so why did you start uh, writing thrillers? Were you a fan of the genre before you started uh, writing thrillers? Uh, yes, that's the genre of uh, most of the books that I like to, to read or listen to and the books that I, I grew up on, as well as movies or TV shows. So pretty much everything that has spies and, and action, um, I've either watched or, or read or, or read about it or watched documentaries about it. So it was, I've always wanted to write in that category. And how long have you been writing for? I've been writing, uh, well, I've, I'm published coming up on the fourth year in May, and I've been writing a little um, over five or six years. I tried to go the traditional uh, route of getting published, but that didn't go anywhere. So then a friend of mine said, why don't you try to self-publish? And uh, here we are. And those were those the Justin Hall books that you were trying, that you went through originally? Uh, yeah, Arctic War Game, the 
first one in the series, um, I actually got uh, a couple of agents interested and they read the full manuscript, but that, that was the end of that. So I never got any any feedback. You know how it is. They kind mm-hmm. of just send you a, a note after six months or so. Sorry, we're not interested without really telling you. So like, is it the characters? Is it the plot? Is it, you know, the middle that is sagging? It just, um, I, I never really received that constructive feedback I was looking for. Yeah, so that's great. So you just decided to say, yeah, I'll just do it myself. That's the great thing of the last few years with the with the changes in the publishing industry. Yeah, I uh, a friend of mine, he's actually uh, another author. Um, and so he suggested that he's like, why don't you do it there? They're just collecting digital dust in your drawers. I had a couple of books at the time because as I was shopping the first one, I was um, working on the second. So the, the first two books actually came quite um, close in the series. And I think that helped kickstart the series. So I published the first one May 2012 and then the next one October of the same year. Do you usually publish uh, more than one book a year since then? I, I try to be consistent and have one every four months or so. It's a little bit hard at times with my schedule, and uh, but I, I try to be as, as consistent as possible. And so now you had mentioned that you had been a fan of the genre before you started writing. What were some of your favorite uh, thriller authors, and had, did they influence the way you write today? They do. They do a lot. Uh, sometimes when I read, I'm like, "Hey, I've uh, I've done that," or um, or you know, this author has done something similar to uh, one of my books. So Brad Thor is one that I really like. I enjoy his uh, his works. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Vince Flynn was also a, a great author. Uh, I like Daniel Baldacci. Uh, sorry, David Baldacci. So um, this, those would be three of the, the favorites in the genre. And then I, uh, I read also outside the genre, legal thrillers, um, romantic suspense, things like that. Oh, yeah, this is some of my favorite thriller uh, uh, writers uh, as well. Have you read the new Vince Flynn book that wasn't written after he died? There's a new author now. Uh, no, uh, I haven't gotten a chance uh, to read that yet. I, I think it has uh, gotten some mixed reviews. Yeah, yeah, I haven't read it either. I have a friend who read it, and he said it was pretty close. But I don't know if you can. I mean, Vince Flint was one, was one of a one, one of a kind. I think. <laughs> yeah, he was a, a master of the genre. So whenever you have, um, you know, extremely large shoes to fill, that's um, especially in the eyes of the fans, right? It's uh, yeah. you're, you're used to a certain style, and then, um, you know, the the author is not there anymore. So, I've also heard that sometimes when. Uh, when authors co-author with either you know dead or alive authors like Tom Clancy, for example, or or um, other ones, uh, also the fans don't seem to move to the new authors' uh, individual books. So you may be writing to the the fans of Tom Clancy, um, the the millions, but that doesn't mean that they will actually move to your own uh, books that are under your just your own name. Yeah, they probably don't even see the other author's name. They probably just see that Tom Clancy. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'd be tough. <laughs> yeah, and also, you know how it is in the in the cover, right? Tom Clancy's name is like four inches, and then yeah. your your name is just uh, not even half an inch there, right? Yeah, with uh, John Doe and tiny little letters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so what inspired you to write your first book? Well, I, uh, I have a, a master's um, in law degree, and when I was working on that one, I had to write uh, this huge 150 pages thesis. It taught me or it showed me that I could actually write a full length uh, document. I mean, this one wasn't a, a bestseller. It will never be. It's, uh, uh, it's a thesis you write for your uh, for credit at, at school. So, so years ago, I, was, um, I learned that I can actually write um, and, and hopefully write well. So that rekindled my, uh, my desire to, to go into writing. And then uh, about six or so months later, as I was in the process of thinking, I read a, a book from a, a very famous author that uh, uh, I found very disappointing. So as I finished the book, which never went anywhere, I said, hey, I can I can." do this and I can probably do much better. So of course the fans can can tell and um, I've gotten some excellent feedback uh, over the years but uh, I think I've I've, um, I've created some some uh, decent books out there. 
Yeah, how many books do you have published so far? I have eight in the Justin Hall series, and I have one in the Carrie Chronicles, which is another uh, spy um, series. And then I tried my hand on romantic suspense, so I've written one in the Jennifer Morgan um, romantic suspense series. Oh wow! So you've written, uh, you've you've been busy with, especially with you with your. Uh, uh, full-time job and all this and publishing all these books that's awesome yeah yeah i uh, i tell people when they ask about time because that's finding the time is one of the the so-called secrets of writing right uh, mm -hmm. if you if you can't find the time then of course you're not going to put anything on the page so uh, i do most of my writing actually when i commute to work i have a, a little over an hour each way going to work so i sit at the back of the bus i have my laptop on and I use my briefcase as a mobile uh, table. So I, I'm not on the internet. So I pretty much have about 40 to 45 good uh, minutes uh, that I can put on a good day. Like today, going to work and coming back, uh, it was a little over 2,000, a little under 2,000 words. So that's, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Oh yeah, that's a great two thousand a two thousand word day is I'll take that any day of the <laughs> of the week. It it's not always. Sometimes you know you have a baby crying in the bus, yeah. or or the person next to you wants to chat, or sometimes you just don't have the inspiration. So some days are two hundred, three hundred word days. But you know, whenever I'm I'm blessed, like uh, today or um, or Friday, I was almost uh, close to uh, fifteen hundred. So that one was a good number as well. Do you write every day? I try to. Uh, yesterday, I, I wasn't able to write, but I wrote today and I wrote Friday. So I, I try to make a point even sometimes I write during my lunch break or sometimes I wake up in the morning or late at night. So writing on the bus, it's not the only the only place or the only time that I write. But yeah, I, um, I, I try very hard to write uh, every day, Monday to Friday. And uh, where do you get your ideas for your books? I try to follow the news because my books uh, uh, reflect some of what's going on in uh, in the international arena about terrorism. So I follow closely the developments in the uh, Middle East, uh, what's going on in Syria and uh, uh, Iraq and other hot uh, hot areas uh, uh, in in that region. And interesting enough, some of the 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 cycle of violence. Um, sadly, but also uh, interestingly, uh, tends to repeat. So even though you might, I might write about, you know, let's say an assassination attempt on a president or a prime minister, that's not something that uh, has only happened once and will only happen once, right? So you can, uh, you can see if you, if you read the, the news or if you watch shows that um, the area is very volatile. So events that happened 10 years ago or even five years ago, there is a, a great likelihood that they will repeat uh, again in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we uh, learned from our, from our mistakes. I remember as a kid in the 70s, there was a lot of terrorism. And yeah, you're right. Now it seems the last 10 years or so has come back full circle. <laughs> Yeah, and I try not to to date the works. So the series is actually set in um, about five to eight years in the in the future. So in one of the books, uh, the the new president of the United States is discussed, and it's a she. So of course we know it's uh, it's not right now, and I don't know if it's going to be in uh, the next year or not. But uh, we'll have to see for that. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. So you go, you're you're writing in the future. Oh, that's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So when I when I refer to to events like you know the the spread of ISIS or uh, the Taliban or or other other events, I have to to make sure that the language is not uh, specific, right? So I say mm -hmm. uh, you know the resurfacing of uh, the Taliban or the resurfacing of uh, of ISIS, and of course as history has shown you. Most people can remember the mission accomplished uh, a couple of months after the invasion of Iraq, mm -hmm. right? And um, 11, 12 years later, um, we're still fighting the terrorists. So uh, even if, if ISIS is destroyed uh, and mission accomplished is declared, let's say, uh, next year, I'm sure not not all the terrorists will, will disappear. So some of them will probably resurface under another banner uh, in the same area or or in other areas in in Africa or Asia or or even elsewhere. 
And do you tra- do are your books? Um, do you worry about like the politics? Like if you're gonna offend the readers, or or do you try to to keep that out? Uh, I've actually offended uh, a few readers. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. My reviews, especially the the early reviews, uh, called uh, some of the books anti-American uh, because uh, some of the villains uh, in in the books were were Americans. They were not the only ones. I mean, they're they're Russian villains. They're they're Saudi villains. Uh, uh, every great story needs to have some villains, right? Mm-hmm. And um, the specific books in question, the first to the third, without giving too much of the plot, there are also some Canadian. Uh, villains there as well. So, in a sense, I've been kind of uh, uh, try to be as uh, as equal in in uh, uh, portraying people that uh, they can betray their own country or they can betray their country's interest. Uh, and if you read uh, the reality, there are Americans and as well as Canadians who have um, who have been considered traitors and who have actually sold the the secrets of their country for money. So uh, offending people, it's something I guess that uh, that comes with uh, with the territory. You can never uh, please um, uh, everyone. I get reviews from people that say there is too much action, and then uh, some people say there is not enough action. Yeah, I agree with that. You can't please everybody, that's for sure. <laughs> I was noticing on your Carrie Chronicle spy thriller series, did you find it more challenging to write with a female character versus a male protagonist as being a, a, a man? Or how, how did that, what were the challenges with that? That's, a, that's an excellent question, actually. Uh, also because you don't see a female character much in the... Um, in the genre or in the mm-hmm. action spy thriller, usually the female characters in this sort of genre are um, are just uh, minor characters, secondary, just for the sex or the uh, trying to honeypot someone into into giving away secrets. So I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to fall into the cliche. So Carrie's character is uh, uh, in the first book. Um, she comes across as uh, someone who is uh, is has her fragile side. So she she's struggling with the relationship with her fiancé. Uh, she's struggling with issues with her, her sick mom and uh, the relationship with her, her uh, sister. She's also trying to find out what happened to her dad. Uh, all this while she's trying to keep together her, her career as well. So I was looking for a character who wasn't uh, superhuman, uh, you know, uh, bounces off bullets and and uh, uh, manages uh, everything. So it's a, it's a character that um, that I also try to give some Canadian flavor. And Canadians are known for teamwork. So I try mostly in the Justin Hall books to uh, to have him and Carrie operate as a team along with other characters. Um, now the Carrie series shows Carrie on solo adventures, so Justin doesn't appear there, but she always relies on other members of her team, so it's never uh, really by herself. Oh, but she she did, a, the character of Carrie appeared in the Justin Hall books first? Oh, right, right. She oh, appeared, okay. yeah, she's uh, kind of the... the the, the side, off. yeah, the the sidekick, so to speak, of of Justin. She's uh, kind of trying to keep him uh, level-headed. So whenever Justin decides to to do something, Carrie's always the the voice of reason. Uh, also bringing in uh, sometimes being uh, you know what's considered the devil's advocate, um, arguing the other side, kind of what might be the the repercussions of these actions, uh, or if we don't uh, don't take certain actions. Do you find like a movies and uh, you know television pop culture do they influence your your novels? Uh they do and I actually find out sometimes after after I've read a scene or or a book and then I watch a movie especially uh something that I've watched before and I do notice some similarities. So one of my um uh, one of my goals is to try to make sure that I don't read or I don't watch as much, or when I do, try to make sure that I don't recycle the plots. You you don't want a reader to say, "Oh, I watched this on Covered Affairs or on Homeland or you know Brad Thor's last book uh, covered the same um, the same topics or the same plots." And are there any similarities between you and your characters that you create? I don't think so. Maybe subconsciously, Justin is uh, the the spy agent that uh, I wanted to be. If I if I were ever to to be a spy agent, uh, I almost went to military school. My dad wanted me to become a military officer, so that never went anywhere. I I turned out to be a lawyer, um, make a living that way. But yeah, if I were a a, a spy agent for uh, the real Canadian. Uh, 
um, agency, security agency. Yeah, I, I would want to be like Justin, just without the baggage that, that he has. And what about your friends and family? Do you ever like name a character after a friend? or? I, I do sometimes. Not not really close friends, but I've done that sometimes. And uh, it's... Um, it's a little head nod, like, thank you for, for your support, um, buying my books. Uh, here's one more reason to buy. There's a character there that uh, either dies or um, appears just for uh, for a chapter or two. But I, I try not to not to put um, uh, people there that end up dying because sometimes uh, that, that may be misunderstood. And what are some of the challenges for you when you're writing, uh, like, in, like doing the research or... Uh, some of the research it's uh, it's difficult to do because I uh, I talk about or my characters go to places where even Google Maps um, don't really help. So you know the mountainous regions of uh, Pakistan is uh, one of the areas that Kerry uh, uh, is traveling to in uh, in my current uh, work in progress. So it's it's really difficult to to describe the locales there. So I uh, I try to whenever I can't find the information, I use my creative license and uh, pretty much create a, a fictitious market or uh, sometimes even a fictitious um, small town. As long as it's um, it has the flavor of what we know, what people know about Pakistan or Afghanistan, and also one thing that I found as I um, as I write, readers nowadays uh, compared to 50 or even 20 years ago are much more uh, knowledgeable about what's happening globally. So if I say um, you know the the mountainous areas of Afghanistan, and I give a couple of sentences to describe the the, the area, the desert. And some of the the, the flavors there. Uh, that's all that the the readers need to know. I don't have to explain in details how you would need to do uh, fifty or sixty or or even twenty years ago when people couldn't access information. Nowadays, you can read the, the newspapers that are published in this country. So it's it's really easy. Um, let alone you know the twenty four hour news networks. And I think we have uh, over ten or so um, going on at the same time. Yeah, that's amazing when you write something and then the reader says, oh, yeah, I did that. Or I was there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's incredible. What is your process then? Are you, uh, do you outline a lot or do you just kind of just start writing? I've uh, grown to do more outline because I mm. find it helps. I know where the story is going. One of the things that I always know is the end. So before I even start writing uh, the new story, I try to think and imagine where this story is going to uh, culminate and end. And of course, the, the main character is not going to die, so I know that. But which one of the villains is going to go away unless I leave a cliffhanger and how? So I have this, this huge scene in mind, and then I work backwards. So I try to put clues. So how is Kerry going to learn this? Or how is uh, this person who is helping her going to get uh, their hands on this information. And then moving backwards is um, like doing a puzzle, but um, uh, not creating the puzzle, but trying to dis, uh, dismount, you know, dismantle the puzzle, you know? So you have it all finished, and then you remove the pieces and you put them in, in the individual chapters. I find the, the beginning of the story flows really well, and then, you know, the sagging middle, it's true. I have to, to go back and reread um, what I've written so far to make sure that uh, it actually flows. Since you're writing several series, uh, 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 do you write uh, on different series at the same time? Or do you write on one and then move on to the next one? I just started the Carrie series last, uh, well, December 2014. So that's when I wrote the first uh, uh book in the series uh it was a novella and then i wrote the first book in the jennifer morgan series so the romantic suspense came out early 2015 and then i wrote two books in the justin hall series uh, number seven and eight and then uh, i extend expanded the the novella into a full length novel the the first uh, book in Carrie's Chronicles and now I'm working on the second one so I try to alternate between the series so that I don't uh, uh, end up uh, copying and pasting the same thing uh, mentally, uh, plot wise I mean, and also it gives me some time to think where the character is going and to to let the plot brew uh, in a sense in the on the back burner 
And I was just reading the description on your uh, the on the Jennifer Morgan series. So even though it's a romantic suspense, you're still kind of staying in the thriller world a little bit there. Suspense. <laughs> yeah, it it actually ended up having more uh, more suspense than romance. There, I was writing a couple of scenes uh, with you know when the the main characters kiss, and I'm like, oh, that's uh, that's weird. Like uh, I I haven't uh, ever done that in a book. So. <laughs> Yeah, that was um, it. It kind of the characters took uh, took their own spin. So uh, as I've noticed, uh, there there is more more suspense. So it would fall more uh, in the. It could even be uh, a mystery uh, mystery mm-hmm. thriller because there is some. Um, you you know who the villain is from the the start, but it's uh, the story unfolds as how can uh, Jennifer uh, prove that the person is uh, who she says it is. So, uh, what what keeps you uh, writing? What, what what keeps you going with the writing? Uh, I like the feedback that I get from my fans. So the support and uh, and the feedback, the great feedback that I get, keeps me going. And I love what I'm doing. It's really good to wake up and to to uh, take characters into a new world. It's in a sense, uh, it allows me a chance to escape. And I'm sure it uh, it does the same for a lot of readers. Uh, we want to live um, vicariously through uh, the eyes of um, of um, our, the bravest amongst us. Some of these areas, even if uh, I was paid uh, my weight in gold, I wouldn't want to go. It's mm-hmm. it's it's very dangerous. Uh, and we we always hear about journalists or uh, aid workers or um, businessmen that uh, disappear. So these are areas that um, no one um, should go. And as we know, even the people living there, they, they do what they can to to leave those those areas, leave them for good. So it's um, it's pure entertainment. Um, none of this is uh, is actually real in the sense of what the agents do even though a lot of the background and a lot of the stories uh, mirror and reflect what's uh, actually happening in real life. And how long does it take you to uh, write a book from beginning to finishing it? I, I aim for four months. Sometimes it takes about four, four and five, four to six, because there is the editing and mm. there is the beta reading, and um, there's a, the proofreading there as well. So what I've tried to uh, streamline the process and uh, have my better readers read as I write, uh, but that creates uh, sometimes the danger that I can't write as fast as uh, my better readers can actually read. So in the last uh, couple of books, there, w- there were a period of time that uh, uh, they were asking me like, hey, where, where are the next chapters? And and. I, I didn't have them ready. So um, it's this fine balance. Yeah, it's this fine balance of trying to um, not not have um, the eager readers ready and you don't have anything to feed them. Yeah, yeah, that's a little pressure when they're asking you for the next chapter. You're like, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, so I, I try to give them uh, um, between 10 and 20 pages every week. And that allows me on a... On a very good week I can do that uh, I can write 10 to 20 pages uh, a week and uh, uh, polish and revise it and make sure that uh, the better readers can uh, can actually enjoy them because you know there's it's not a lot of fun to to stumble on every every other word that has an error or the characters uh, uh, hair color changes or the eye colors changes on from one paragraph to the other do you still find time to read yourself, or you, is this like you have a busy schedule? <laughs> I've I've moved more into uh, listening. So on my blog, I used to uh, do book reviews. I was interviewing um, uh, writers, mostly traditionally published, but also the occasional independent author and uh, review books as well. So I moved away from uh, from that. I, I don't do book reviews. Um, it, it takes a lot of time, and I don't really have the time, but. Uh, audiobooks, I I really like them because I can listen uh, whenever I take my dog out or whenever I shovel snow. I live in Canada, so we get um, six, seven months of uh, snow shoveling. It's our <laughs> outdoor sports, I guess. Uh, instead of workout, you go outside and you you shovel for half an hour. But yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to to do, and um, it's uh, you can uh, you can always uh, do that whether you're on the bus or waiting in line somewhere or. Pretty much whenever you can, uh, you can steal 10, 15 minutes. Are your books available in, in audio as audiobooks? 
No, they're not. It's something that I'm looking into, uh, and the the main obstacle that I found is the lack of places to promote the mm-hmm. the audiobook. So most of the the readers, uh, your listeners, probably know about BookBub, one of the largest uh, promotional websites. I haven't seen anything like that for for audiobooks. Also, the the royalty structure is not as uh, uh, as good as it is with digital media. So once those uh, those two things have uh, worked themselves, then uh, definitely I'll take my chances with uh, audiobooks as well. How do you uh, interact with your readers? I have a blog where um, I try to update it as often as possible. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I've been able to put a little note um, uh, almost on, on a daily basis. I uh, love to get emails from uh, fans. I totally love email, uh, and uh, I make promises wherever I uh, uh, my books are available that I will answer all emails, even those emails that uh, uh, may not be as, as pleasant as um, others. But, uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook as well. I'm on Twitter. And what about the, with the writing community? Do you, do you interact with other writers? Yeah, the the only writer community that I'm on it's uh, it's on keyboards. So uh, I really enjoy the the fraternity there. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your current work in progress right now, or what you're working on? What's coming up soon? Sure. So uh, the the tentative date is April 12th, and uh, you know how it is with at least with Amazon, you have to meet the line, or you're uh, uh, you're in the the detention. Uh, or a year, so I'm aiming to to get the second Kerry Chronicles uh, novel out uh, at that time. So the name it's code name Makarov, uh, like mm-hmm. the, the Russian pistol. And uh, in this one, Kerry uh, from the previous the Justin All series and also her own uh, first book, Kerry is looking to find out what happened to her dad. So she knows that her dad uh, disappeared and uh, he was uh, eventually killed in. Uh, in the Soviet Union, but she doesn't know the details, and um, she knows she's learned a few things. But she, uh, in this in this book, she will actually learn exactly the 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 truth. So we'll find out who the the this agent that goes by codename Makarov is, and how is he involved in uh, Carrie's father disappearance. And that's available for a pre-sale. It is available for pre-order on. Uh, not not on Amazon. I still haven't haven't finalized it. Although there is a date there, but on on all the other uh, retailers, Kobo, Smashwords, um, iTunes, Barn and Nobles, Google Play, it's it's available, and it's two ninety nine. So that's not going to be the the final price. So um, you know, if you if you want to pre order it and you want to send uh, save a couple of dollars. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll of course, if people are listening on here, I'll have links on the website too, where they can get it and all that, all that good stuff. Because everyone likes a good thriller, and saving a couple of bucks, that's nice, that's that's a bonus. Is there anything else before I let you go? Is there anything else that you can uh, tell us uh, that you want to tell you, the listeners? I, I'd love to hear their their thoughts. I'm always looking for for ideas for um, things that uh, can be covered in. Um, in my stories, so I um, I've changed a few things based on on readers' uh, feedback, especially the ones that uh, have the background in either espionage or military, which um, unfortunately I don't. I try to to learn as much as I can. But if you have ideas, um, things that you want to tell me, something that worked in my stories or something that I totally got wrong, by all means, please uh, drop me an email and, uh, and let me know and. Oh yeah, and I just noticed that uh, that if they su- subscribe to your mailing list on your website, they get the uh, triple East target, huh? They do, they do. Yeah, so um, they uh, Arctic is actually I just made it free uh, for in uh, conjunction with the promotion I'm gonna uh, run soon. But yeah, the first book in um, just in all series it's free on all uh, all retailers, and if you sign up for the mailing list, you can get the second one for free. And being in the mailing list. Uh, um, gives you news about um, promotions, new releases. I also have a couple of teams, the advanced reader team and the ambassadors team. So you can drop me a note and you can learn what, what I offer if you want to to be a part of those teams. All right. Well, Ethan, I want to thank you very much for, uh, for being on the show and telling us about your work. Uh, much appreciated. 
Thanks so much. Appreciate and uh, have a good evening. You can learn more about uh, Ethan Jones and his work and sign up for his mailing list. You can get those uh, free books at his website at ethanjonesbooks.wordpress.com. And I'll have links to that on the website on the show notes. Thank you for listening to this episode of Meet the Thriller Author. You can visit our site at get.thrillingreads.com forward slash podcast for more information on our podcasts. And you can also subscribe to this podcast uh, on your favorite podcatcher like iTunes, the most popular one, of course. Uh, just search for Meet the Thriller Author and you'll find me there. And I'm also on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash meet thriller author. Love to hear from you. Love to hear your comments and your feedbacks on the shows. And I'll have a new podcast, a new interview with a thriller author. Uh, they'll be posting them every Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to subscribe. And please visit my author website at alanpeterson.com.